Hello everyone, welcome back to another session in Dentistry and more. Today's topic in oral surgery is principles of exodontia and its techniques. So, as per definition, exodontia is a painless removal of the whole tooth or root with minimal trauma to the investing tissues so that the wound heals unevenfully and no post-operative prosthetic problem is created. So, removing the tooth without damaging the supporting structures and to make it painless as much as possible. That is exodontia. And we have two types of uh, tooth removal or exodontia. The first one is intra alveolar type. That is the most common type which is done by uh, the forceps or it is also known as forceps extraction. and the second one is trans alveolar which is a surgical extraction trans alveolar or surgical so where we uh, retract the flap and using a um, micromotor or a rotor we cut the bone and sometimes we split the tooth or sometimes we take the tooth as a whole so it is a surgical extraction that is transalveolar, intraalveolar is a normal forceps extraction. So what are the indications of intraalveolar extraction? That is, uh, it could be due to severe caries, severe periodontal disease, uh, failure of any endodontic treatment, orthodontic purpose or prosthodontic purpose, teeth from fracture line or economically failure to preserve the tooth see all these conditions indicates tooth extraction and sometimes the tooth extraction is contraindicated it can be systemic and local causes so systemic uh, causes uh, one is severe uncontrolled diabetes mellitus then uh, severe myocardial infarction then uncontrolled leukemia and lymphoma and if patient has any bleeding disorders and pregnancy that is most commonly first and third trimester the procedure can be done safely during the second trimester so this is a systemic causes or systemic uh, contraindications whereas the local contraindications includes tumor at the site of extraction or uh, severe infection severe infection so when we have a severe infection with respect to tooth the LA won't be effective so we cannot uh, proceed a, a proper extraction so these are the systemic and local contraindications of exodontia and how do we start the exodontia that is a pre-operative assessment pre-operative assessment that is assessing a person whether a person is ready for an extraction or not so first thing is we need to take a proper history of the patient history taking that is a medical history we need to ask about hypertension history jaundice history kidney diseases rheumatic uh, problems cardiac diseases asthma bleeding disorders and with respect to dental history so that was medical history regarding the dental history we need to ask about history of previous extraction or any other complications or uh, any uncontrolled bleeding uh, which faced in the previous uh, extraction procedure so after history taking we need to start clinical examination so clinical examination we need to check for proper uh, mouth opening that is the accessibility then the tooth mobility then crown condition of the tooth sometimes the crown might be in a very bad state because of the caries or restoration or fracture or cervical caries and we need to check the oral hygiene status of the patient then presence of infection at the site of injection after that uh, we can go for radiographic radiological examination 
so in radiological examination uh, we need to assess the vital structures which is related to the extraction site uh, most commonly the maxillary sinus when we uh, try to extract the upper posterior teeth and the inferior alveolar nerve the lower molars and root configuration to make sure that uh, there is no diversion or dilacerated tooth which might create a breaking of tooth while extraction so we need to uh, make sure that it is not divergent if it is so we need to be very cautious or we need to go for a transalveolar extraction so make sure that uh, there is no dilaceration convergent ankylosed or hypercementosis or any periapical radiolucency and contusion of the bones of the jaw also should be assessed radiographically after that uh, the surgeon preparation okay the surgeon should be prepared for the extraction surgeon he need to wear the hand gloves mask i wear with shield surgical gown sterilization of all the mentioned uh, materials after the surgeon is ready we, meanwhile we need to make the patient ready that is we need to give prophylactic antibiotics if the patient is having myocardial infarction or in such cases antibiotic prophylaxis uh, amoxicillin uh, should be given and uh, prophylactic mouth cleaning should be done before any extraction that will reduce the post operative infection that is basic scaling polishing uh, and proper rinsing with antiseptic mouthwash and also we need to uh, drape the patient that is keeping a towel on the patient's chest so once the patient and surgeon is ready we need to arrange the uh, tray that is the armamentarium we need to have mirror tweezer the probe elevators that is straight and angular elevators the forceps uh, wherever it is required that is upper forceps anterior posterior right and left so whichever tooth is we need to select forceps accordingly then cryos triangular elevator so root forceps also we can make it ready uh, so if it is not uh, intralveolar extraction if it is a transalveolar extraction we need to arrange bone file ronger the curate uh, and all other things also we need to uh, make ready the local anesthesia bottle syringe cotton pellet suture materials and needle holding forceps and now the important part that is a positioning of the patient so proper positioning of the patient will reduce the fatigue of the uh, surgeon or the dentist the maxilla and mandible positioning is different for maxilla um, the chair should be tipped backward as you see here it should be tipped backward and the maxillary occlusal plane is at 60 degree uh, to the floor so this is the floor so it should be at 60 degree 60 degree and the height of the dental chair should be 8 centimeter below the shoulder level of the operator so if the operator is as you can see here from the shoulder level of the operator it should be 8 centimeter below for the mandibular teeth extraction the mandibular teeth the patient should be positioned as the occlusal plane is parallel to the floor okay this is at 60 degree this is parallel and the chair should be uh, 16 centimeter below the level of operator's elbow 16 centimeter below elbow operator's elbow that is a dentist elbow this is 8 centimeter below the operator's shoulder so this is how we position the patient with respect to maxilla and mandibular teeth extraction now the surgeon position so where exactly the surgeon should be seated so for all maxillary teeth Okay, all maxillary teeth, anterior mandibular teeth and teeth of third quadrant. Okay, quadrant. All these cases, the surgeon should be at right front position. And for the fourth quadrant, the patient I mean uh, the surgeon should be at right back position ok 
okay so fourth quadrant is nothing but the mandibular right side okay so this is mandibular left side and maxillary teeth and anterior mandibular teeth patient should be at right front and fourth quadrant patient should uh, dentist should be at right back position so this is how the surgeon should be seated as you can see the picture here so once uh, we are done with the uh, pre-surgical procedures that is a proper positioning of dentist proper positioning of the patient and all armamentarium is ready then we can start the procedure so we need to follow the basic principles of uh, extraction so now let's learn the principles of tooth extraction so the first one is expansion of the bony sockets as you see here you can see the procedure how to expand the bony socket that is expansion uh, by use of the wedge shaped uh, beaks of the forceps so beaks will be positioned as apically with good pressure to expand the crystal bones and to displace the center of rotation as apically as possible so as you see here it should be positioned as apically as possible okay so this center of rotation should be more apically then the force will be less and we can easily remove the tooth if it is coming more coronally uh, the high chances of uh, breakage of tooth so the basic movements uh, movements should be towards buccal and palatal buccal or palatal so buccal movements the pressure applied to the tooth will expand the buccal cortical plate towards the crestal bone with some lingual expansion at apical end of the root if we move to uh, buccal side okay this is a tooth okay when we move to buccal side there will be expansion here and also expansion at the apical end of the lingual side and similarly or lingual and palatal movements pressure will expand the lingual cortical plate so this is buccal and this is lingual so when we move towards the lingual there will be expansion of the lingual cortical plates and slightly expand the buccal apical area because when this move here this root will be slightly move to the opposite side so for uh, the tooth second molar lower second molar we need to do this lingo buccal movements lingo buccal movements for second molar mandibular second molar okay whereas the rotational force we can go for rotational force for the conical roots most commonly the maxillary uh, central incisors they have the conical root so we can go for a rotational that is a rotational movements and tractional forces are useful for final removal of the tooth from socket so they should always be small forces because teeth are not pulled okay so we need to apply the trans tractional forces not sorry not transaction tractional forces for the final removal okay so the final withdrawal movement of most of the upper and lower teeth is an outward occlusal direction except for the lower third molar which should be in a lingual occlusal way and maxillary third molar should be disto buccal so most of the cases when we remove it as you see here when we remove it finally it should be a outward occlusal direction but few exceptions on one for the mandibular third molar that is the lingo occlusal way and disto buccal way in maxillary third molar cases and the proper use of forceps in luxation and removal of teeth so the extraction movements are essentially three movements which are outward inward and rotatory these are the three movements 
So outward is the buccal or labial movement is the initial movement of all teeth except lower second and third molar where the buccal plate of bone is reinforced by the external oblique ridge. Okay. So that is the outward or buccal labial movement. Then inward that is lingual or palatal. So buccal movement should not be done on lower second and third molar because of the presence of oblique ridge and lingual or palatal movement is the initial movement during the extraction of the lower second and third molar so these outward movement should not be done on lower second and third molar where the initial movement should be lingual or palatal force and primary rotatory movement is the initial movement used in upper central incisor and lower second premolar upper I'll just mention upper central incisor and lower second premolar. Okay, so these teeth should be started with initial movement as a rotatory movement. If a resistance is felt in primary rotation, a buccolingual movement should be started. Okay, and if rotatory movement continued, a spiral fracture of the tooth root may occur. So, if resistance is there, we should go for a Buccolingual movement. Then, once the alveolar bone has expanded sufficiently and the tooth has been laxated, a slight traction forces should be applied. So, usually directed buccally. Okay. So, once we get the proper laxation, we can start using the traction force. So final movement is the movement by which the tooth is removed from the bony socket. So it should be always directed outward and occlusal to avoid the traumatizing the opposite tooth. So we just cannot uh, pull it out because it might injure the opposite tooth. Okay, so the extraction forceps blade should be applied to the caries side first and the first movement made towards the caries. Okay, not away from the caries because there will be uh, fracture of the tooth now we have the basic principles of uh, tooth extraction and the first one is the fulcrum or liver principle so this is a liver a liver is a mechanism for transmitting a modest force with a mechanical advantage so the usage of elevators okay are basically work on these principles so that is the to obtain maximum mechanical advantage of the elevator the fulcrum should be near to the point of resistance okay it should be near to the point of resistance and the effort arm effort arm should be longer than the resistant arm this is a effort arm should be longer than the resistant arm so this is the principle of class 1 liver Okay, class 1 liver and rules of uh, using elevator there should be palm grip don't use a neighboring tooth as fulcrum don't use a buckle or lingual plate of bone as fulcrum use a left hand for reflection guarding and supporting take care of the surrounding vital structures and always follow the root curvature so principles of use of elevators the first one is wedge principle wedge okay wedge principle then the liver principle and axle and wheel principle so the elevators are differ uh, which is uh, based on the principle they use because the wedge principle commonly the straight elevator straight elevator Whereas the liver principle, Copeland elevator, and axle and wheel principle, the cry elevator. The wedge principle uh, is like some elevators are designed primarily to be used as a wedge, like Apexo elevator or Copeland. These elevators are forced between the root of the tooth and the investing bony tissue parallel to the long axis of the tooth, as you see here. Whereas the liver principle, it is uh, on applying this principle, the elevator is the lever of the first class. 
okay the position of the fulcrum is between the effort and resistance in order to obtain a mechanical advantage and the last one is uh, wheel and axle principle okay so wheel and axle so wheel and axle principle it is uh, as you see here the wheel and axle is a simple machine the effort is applied to the circumference of a wheel okay circumference of a wheel effort is applied to the circumference of a wheel uh, which turn the axle so as to raise a weight it could be used as a sole work principle in removing the tooth or it is also used in conjunction with wedge or lever principle so these are the three principles uh, the lever principle and the wedge principle and wheel and axle principle basically uh, basically it is for the elevators so what are the dangers in use of elevators the first thing is loosening or extracting the adjacent teeth so we should never keep the adjacent teeth as fulcrum or buckle or ringle plate and there are chances of fracture the alveolar process or fracturing the mandible penetrating the maxillary sinus and forcing the root into the maxillary sinus and forcing a root of mandibular third molar through the lingual plate of the mandible and damage the soft tissues by slipping the lip of the elevator and what is the role of operator's other hand okay if he is a right handed person the other hand person's left hand is of very crucial importance because that hand plays an important role in supporting and stabilizing the lower jaw when mandibular teeth are being extracted and the opposite hand supports the alveolar process and provides tactile information to the operator concerning the expansion of the alveolar process so we need to support the uh, structures especially uh, mandible and the alveolar process while using the other hand that is very much crucial because otherwise there will be a fracture of a mandible or other supporting structures so once uh, tooth is extracted uh, we need to irrigate the socket with normal saline or other antiseptic solution then curettage of the socket to remove any bony fragments or granulation tissue breakdown of the bony sharp edges uh, at the socket and the interradicular bone squeezing of the socket mouth rinsing with antiseptic solution and suturing only if it is required so we need to give proper post operative instructions that is removal of the cotton or goes back at least 1 hour later and take cool and soft diet for at least 24 hours avoid the hot and hard diet for 24 hours never to use straw for drinking anything because the straw create negative pressure and it creates bleeding so do not rinse forcefully and uh, do, do not breast the site of extraction at least for 24 hours because during this 24 hours the clot formation uh, happens and the proper healing uh, should take place then uh, we should not disturb the clot site for at least 24 hours if it is disturbed then there is chances of dry socket and instruct the patient to maintain the oral hygiene if uh, suturing is done uh, we need to remove it after one week so these are the basic uh, principles of exodontia we discussed in detail the principles the pre assessment pre surgical assessment uh, post extraction uh, instructions and the positioning of the dentist and positioning of the patient and the armamentarium and all other things so hope you understood this uh, exodontia concept to an extent it's not a complete uh, picture of uh, exodontia but it will uh, definitely help you in uh, writing your exams because there are lots of questions been asked from exodontia principles of exodontia then the wheel and axle principle wedge principle uh, lever principle then positioning of the dentist and the patient so everything uh, is very important on exam point of view 
so i'll come up with a new topic in neurosurgery thank you